Welcome back to Midnight Run. Thank you guys again for joining me. Today we are going to be talking about the HK416. This bad boy has been responsible for more deaths than cancer. Uh, great rifle, definitely a fan favorite. A lot of people were leaving comments that they wanted to see me review the 416 and my opinion on it. So that's what we're going to do. You ask, I give. Roll that intro, come on. Sorry for the change of scenery. You guys are probably wondering where we're at. We're actually in the bat cave right now. So we were gonna film this video um, up at our normal spot up in the woods, but we were there, we were setting up, everything was going good, and then uh, a bunch of stinky hippies came to go smoke some pot. And we were like, oh God, here we go. We're running around with guns and stuff, and you have a bunch of dirty hippies trying to get high in the background. And we were like, this does not look good. So thank you hippies for whoever you were. You ruined the shot. So we had him bring it to the Batcave, which I actually kind of like better because we got the fire in the background. I look like an evil villain. Um, it's a lot warmer. It's, it's extremely cold here in Connecticut. So I kind of like filming it inside, but Midnight Run is the name. Going nut to butt is the game. HK416 today. Stay for that whole video because we're gonna talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of this rifle. Um, and you know what I'm gonna say, if you haven't gave her a little lick and you weren't very friendly to that like button, definitely consider doing that. Definitely consider running those dick beaters right across that keyboard and leaving a comment. Really helps me out, really helps out the production, really helps out the channel. So let's just dive right, in, right on into the meat and potatoes of this bad boy. It was originally created in the 1990s for Delta Force. Delta Force was using the MP5 for close quarter combat, which shoots that nine millimeter, which they said is not a very powerful round and they need something with a little more stopping power. But also they need something a little smaller than the M4. So Larry Vickers, God bless him. If you guys don't know who he is, definitely go check him out. Went to HK and they created this beautiful rifle. Um, it was originally supposed to be called the HK M4, but Colt sued him. <laughs> Colt said, absolutely not. We own the M4. You are not using that. So that is how the HK416 um, was named. And that's how it was created. And that's who it was created for. Uh, a lot of history behind this thing. A lot of different people use these. And it was most significantly known for shooting Osama bin Laden right in the face. This was the rifle that the uh, United States... Navy SEALs use, and this was the one that killed Osama bin Laden. Nobody likes that man, and he got his brains blown out. So really iconic rifle, a lot of history behind this thing, and I absolutely love it. Time to go nut to butt, the muzzle device. This is a surefire three-prong war comp. Love the three-prong. Um, I definitely recommend a three-prong over the four-prong. That four prong gives you that really, really distinct pinging noise and it's extremely loud and I don't really like it. So I, that's why I always run the three prong. Um, it, get, it, it gets rid of that, that pinging noise and it does a really, really good job at it. Um, love the War Comp, have them on a bunch of my rifles. Uh, very, very, very good muzzle device. Um, and if I had to pick one muzzle device to run forever, it would probably be the War Comp, especially the three prong. Really hides your flash signature and it's um, all around an A-plus muzzle device. Good. Definitely check them out if you do not have one. The barrel. The barrel is the meat and potatoes of any good rifle. If it's a good rifle, it needs a good barrel. And this one, the HK416, definitely has that. This is a Colt Hammer Forge 11.5 inch barrel, and it has a life expectancy of roughly 20,000 rounds. 20,000 rounds that will outlive you, that will outlive your kids, and that will outlive your grandkids. Really, really tough barrel, really good barrel, 
highly, highly recommend every manufacturer running that cold hammer forge barrel on all of their rifles because I think that that is the best rifle out there. Um, I do like the chrome line barrels too, but that is okay. This one is not. Um, definitely recommend the cold hammer forge barrel on any sort of rifle, especially a rifle like this, especially an AR that you're putting a lot of rounds through it and a lot of rounds quickly. Um, also a disclaimer, because I got a lot of them, I got a lot of the comments saying, man, oh, that's good, you're putting an illegal rifle up on your, uh, up on your, man, I'm a FUD. I'm a FUD and you're, uh, you're putting a lot of illegal stuff up on your YouTube, on the internet. Uh, man. This is SBR'd, okay? It is an 11.5 inch barrel. It's SBR'd, I have the tax stamp for it, I paid for the tax stamp. Do not leave your shitty comment because I'm not doing anything illegal. It is SBR, but time to drive on. Let's get right on into the, this gas block. So instead of using your standard direct gas impingement system that normal AR-15s use, the 416 actually uses a proprietary short stroke gas piston system. And it was actually derived off of the G36 gas block, which is another rifle made by HK. Why they chose to do this was massive heat reduction and a lot less fouling on the bolt, which makes it a lot more reliable uh, system to use. Um, rumor has it when they were testing the 416, they had they did 10,000 rounds on full auto before they had any sort of malfunction, <laughs> which is a lot of rounds. Um, that is why I like the um, piston-driven systems a lot better. They're a lot more cleaner and they're a lot more reliable than your standard direct gas impingement system, which most AR-15s use. So that is why I'm a huge fan of the piston-driven system on all of my rifles. Going into the rail, this is the Geisley SMR rail. It was designed to replace your standard 416 rail. Um, I like how they switched it over to M-Lock. Huge M-Lock fan. I think that it's just a lot more comfortable to shoot with and it's just a lot more modular than your quad rail. Um, the SMR does come with these uh, QD attachments built onto it, which is awesome. It is a little on the expensive side, but if you can get your hands on the guys the SMR rail for your 416, I highly recommend it. You will not be disappointed. Um, I think that it's a far superior rail that that than the standard one that comes on it. So definitely go check it out if you can get if you get your hands on one, you will not be disappointed. A little expensive, but that's all right. That's all right. We all got deep pockets, right? Yeah. Going into the upper. Uh, so your HK416 uppers will fit a mil spec. AR-15 lower. Um, your MR-556, your older ones and stuff, will not do that. Um, that's, that's a good thing about the 416 upper, is it will fit onto a mil-spec lower. Um, this one is on a Brownells, just a disclaimer, it is on a Brownells mil-spec lower, which is really cool because it's better for magazines. Um, you can use your P-Mags, you can use your, you know, your Steel Mags, where your 416s and your HKs, uh, they kind of like they're kind of specific to their own magazines. Um, not all magazines will run with one. Um, so that is a cool feature to the 416 is it, it is, it is able to run on a mil spec lower, which is awesome. Going into the lower, this is a Brownells lower, just a disclaimer. Um, but it will run, your 416 will run on any mil spec lower. So if you have a Knight's Armament or if you have a Daniel Defense or if you have whatever, it will run on it. But going into the trigger, your trigger needs to be a mil spec trigger or a 416 or a 416 trigger. Um, I'm running the 416 one on it. I have no complaints about it. It's a pretty smooth shooting trigger. Um, I was looking at the Geisley one, but to tell you the truth, why spend the money if, you, if, if there's nothing wrong with it? Um, I enjoy it. Nothing bad to say about the about the trigger. It's pretty smooth shooting, and I'm probably just going to keep it. But I know I know Geisley makes a really really nice uh, 416 trigger. But also, if you're going to build it, I recommend using a 416 buffer and a buffer spring for it. Um, it is recommended. There is a lot going on with the 416. It is a it is it is pretty rough shooting. So I highly recommend you actually use the 416 parts if you're on the buffer and the buffer spring. Um, that's just a disclaimer. Do what you want, but that is what's what is recommended. So that's really the meat and potatoes of the 416. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot to this rifle, and there's a lot of history um, with this rifle. So I kind of just briefly went over the key components of it and how how it kind of operates. Uh, huge, huge fan of the 416. 
Um, the only bad thing that I have to say about it is it is kind of heavy. It's very, very top heavy because of that piston driven system. There's a lot of stuff up front. There's a lot of moving parts in the front end of the rifle. So that is definitely a negative. You carry this thing around for a while, it gets very heavy. I know I laugh, just, you know, carry, lift more weights, go to the gym more, but if you carry this thing around for a while, you definitely start feeling it and it, and it definitely starts fatiguing you because it is a very, very heavy rifle. So that is, a, that is the good thing about your standard M4s or your Mark 18s. Um, they are a lot lighter and they're about the same about the same length and everything. Just the only thing why I would probably choose the 416 is I think that it's a more a lot more reliable rifle because of that gap of that piston system. I think that it just it's a, a lot cleaner shooting and it's it's just a lot more reliable. So that's why I would probably take the 416 over a Mark 18 or an M4 or something like that. Um, but huge huge fan of the of the HK416. Highly recommend everybody check one out. They are extremely expensive. Spent a lot of money on this rifle. This thing's about 10 grand, give or take, um, is what I have into it. So your pockets better be pretty deep if you're going to want to want to build a 416. But uh, that's about it. I'm gonna probably make another video revisiting it. Um, again, you could I could talk about this thing for a while, and uh, I just don't have the effort right now. So, <laughs> but I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. Definitely hit that like button, subscribe button, leave that comment how much you hate me and Kyle. But a lot of good stuff coming. Definitely go check out the Instagram and I'll see you guys back out there later.